This would be, perhaps, Drizzt of Dordan's hundredth dawn, and yet he still watched anxiously as the line of red grew above the eastern horizon. He knew well the sting the searing light would bring to his lavender eyes, so used to the shadows of the Underdark, but he accepted that pain as his purgatory. A necessity if he was to follow his chosen path, to become a creature of the surface world. Drizzt was barely forty years old, little more than a child by the measure of his long-lived race. Yet, he had already lived a lifetime or more. He had been born in the great underground city of Menzo Baranzen, home to the twisted evil drow. Dark elves who celebrated violence and treachery in the service of their goddess Loth, the Spider Queen. But Drizzt was different. Under the tutelage of his father Zaknafane, Drizzt had learned principles and dignity, traits which led him to forsake Loth and flee men's Branzen for the wilds of the Underdark, along with Quenhevar, his magical panther and only friend. In those narrow tunnels, Drizzt fought monsters, soldiers and his own creeping madness, brought on by isolation. But the greatest threat came from his vengeful family. They could not forgive his blasphemy. They wanted him dead. Wielding dark magic, Drizzt's mother, Matron Malice O'Dordan, reanimated the corpse of his father, creating a mindless assassin with only one goal, to cut out his son's heart. But even magic has its limits and Zack was able to regain himself long enough to break Malice's spell by plunging himself into a pool of acid. Yet Driz knew that was not the end. The drow his kin would keep hunting him, and the Underdark had no holes deep enough to escape their long reach, which left only one other option. The surface. It was a strange and unpredictable place. Biting wind, which seemed to grow colder each day, chilled Drizzt to the bone. While the sunlight sapped his fine drow magical items, Piwafi armor and scimitars of their enchantments bit by bit, yet Drizzt did not despair. He had made his choice. To survive, he would adapt. Drizzt had made his home in a small mountain cave, but he was rarely there. Instead, Drizzt spent his days foraging across the rolling hills and observing the small farms in the valley below, trying to find the courage to come out of hiding and greet his neighbors. Drizzt knew this type of creature. Nulls, they were called. Some in Menzo Baranzen kept them as slaves. And it was obvious the Nulls knew him well, or at least thought they did. Dark elves had a reputation for violence and cruelty that was widespread. The drow friend. You want me to walk with you? Yes, come, friend. The Nulls were the first intelligent creatures Drizzt had encountered in the surface, and his curiosity about his new world 
and its inhabitants compelled him to follow them. As they traveled, the beasts spoke to one another in a strange barking language Drizzt could barely understand, though it sounded like they were planning some sort of feast. And while food was welcome, something about his new companions made Drizzt wary, though he took solace in knowing that he was not alone. There, one family, two men, two women, three young boys. Drizzt recognized the tone of the Null Reader's voice immediately. He had heard a mixture of excitement and bloodlust once before, on his first trip to the surface more than ten years ago. So? Enemies, kill oldest woman, catch men. Then a band of drow had slaughtered peaceful elven settlement, and while Drizzt had not participated in the massacre, the screams from that night still haunted him. What of the children? Dinner. I think not. <laughs> Gwen Havar! <laughs> Almost as soon as the battle was over, Drizzt began to regret it. Who was he to pass judgment? He knew nothing of the conflict between the Nulls and the humans. Perhaps the farmers had raided the Nulls village earlier, forcing the dog-faced creatures to retaliate in order to defend themselves. Using the magical onyx figure that was Gwenevar's gateway to the material plane, Drizzt sent the great cat back to her astral home. She needed rest and he needed to think. I must learn more. If I am to remain in this world, I must come to understand the ways of my neighbors. And so Drizzt began to watch them. The work they did was simple clean and honest, and when they weren't working, the adults talked and laughed. While the children played, a strange but pleasing sight to Drizzt, drow children did not play. In just three days, old doubt had flown from his mind. Drizzt's instincts about the Nald's evil intentions had been correct. Their farmers were good people, and he vowed that any who wished them harm in the future would first have to contend with the whirling scimitars of Drizzt de Orden. The youngest child, Liam, they called him, had left the farm early in the afternoon Drizzt knew the boy was shirking his shores, but he also knew the hills could be dangerous, so he followed. Who's there? Drizzt cursed himself silently. It meant to protect the boy, not scare him. And now... Help! I'm stuck. I... It had been a trick. The boy obviously thought one of his family was following him, and it intended the false peril to deflect any thoughts of punishment. The ploy was clever, Drizzt had to admit. At 
now having been seen, the Dark Elf decided it was time to introduce himself. Drizzt to Orden. Help! It's a Drizzt! Help me! Meanwhile, miles away high in the mountains, my gnolls. Where are my gnolls? Creatures were called Bagess. Great monsters spawned in the filthy, smoking rifts that marked the hell plain of Gehenna. Near maturity, they had been sent to the material plane to feed and grow, and they had been eating well, at least until a few days ago. You found them. Yes, Master Ulugu, they were dead. What? Slashed and ripped by fine weapons, drow weapons. How do you know that? Many years I was slave in Menza Paranzan. I escaped, but some things I remember. A dark elf. Could it be Brother Kemfana? In this forsaken realm, anything's possible. Hmm. You've done good work, Nathak. I should reward you. Thank you, Magnificent One. I should, but I am hungry. This trow could prove useful. I, it should be an excellent meal. Ugh. No brother, think. We have been feeding off the people of this valley for months. By now, no doubt, they're growing suspicious. Soon the farmers and merchants will begin hunting for the thing that's taken so many of their own. Us. And even though we have grown strong here, a mob of armed men could prove troublesome. Unless, that is, we give them someone else to hunt. Ah, uh, devious Stephanus. To me, quickly. Yes, master. Oh, most powerful and fearsome one. I have a job for you. It's true. It's not. Bad enough you run off when there's work to be done, Liam Thistledown. But coming home with such tales. The Driz is real. It's black as Connor's anvil and has strange purple eyes. I can prove it. How? We've no chores tomorrow. We'll go blueberry picking in the mountains. Just you, me, Eleni, Flanny, and Shauna. Me and my daddy will never. And that's why we won't tell them. I don't know. It might be dangerous. How can it be dangerous when, according to you, there's nothing out there? Let's go, please. All right. And what do we do once we go to the blueberry patch? We set a trap. Drizzt saw the ruse coming long before the farmer's daughter moved out into the blueberry patch. He saw too the four boys hidden in some brush, the eldest brandishing a crude sword, somewhat less than expertly. Oh, help me, help! Drizzt knew the girl was not hurt. She was simply bait. Distress had brought him before, and surely, the children thought, a pretty young girl in pain would bring the Drizzt out again. He thought back to his decade in the wilds of the Underdark when isolation had brought him to the edge of madness. Driz did not want to be that alone ever again. The time had come to meet his neighbors. The Drizzt! I told you so, I told you so! It's a drow! By the gods! Connor had never seen a dark elf before, 
but like all in the realms, he'd heard stories about their vile ways. And so he knew the creature standing before him was evil in its purest form. Turn away, Drow. I'm an expert swordsman, and much stronger than you. Run, Eleni. Trained by Zaknafane Dord, the finest warrior in Menza Branson had ever known, Drizzt disarmed the boy with ease. He had no intention of harming the boy. In Drow custom, such display of superiority, without injuring the opponent, signaled a desire for friendship. Here, however, it did not have the desired effect. Go, run! Run for your lives! He is Dark Elf, asked her be happy, very, very happy. By the next morning, news of the drow sighting had spread throughout the small community of Maldebor, and as they had for generations, the farmers ready to work together and defeat this common foe, though they weren't quite sure how. I've sent a rider to Sundabar asking them to dispatch a ranger. Someone used to dealing with these creatures. If it was a dark elf, it was. My son's no liar, Mayor Delmo. Of course not. I was just saying, if it was a dark elf, that would explain the rash of disappearances on the trade roads lately. Believe me, Bartholomew, I trust. Ye may call this thing a drow, Connor Thistletown. But that title carries more than you can begin to know. If it was a drow you found, my guess that yourself and your kind be lying dead right now in that there blueberry patch. If not a dark elf, then what, McKissel? Connor's no novice with a sword, but this thing bested him in seconds. There's other beasts in the mountains could do that. Goblin, troll, might be a wood elf that's seen too much of the sun. How will we know for sure? We find out by finding it. We go out and see what we can see. We'll set off in an hour. And don't be forgetting your weapons, boys. Who invited him? Roddy McGissel may be a brash lout, but he's also an excellent tracker. If anyone can find this, whatever it is, he can. Fear not, young man. By not fall, all will be right again. It wasn't no goblin or wood elf. You'll see. The hunting party set off that afternoon, led by Roddy McGissel's keen-nosed hounds. Drizzt shadowed them with ease. Part of him longed to continue the events he had set into motion the previous day. But his most rational side prevailed. These men weren't looking to talk. They were looking for battle. They've got scent! And while Driz did not fear for his own safety in such an encounter, he was worried one of the farmers might get hurt. Ah! Driz had no idea what manner of creature had stung him. Only that it was fast and it had stolen one of his scimitars. You hear that? There's something in the brush. All thoughts of his wounded wrist vanished as the farmers closed in. Drizzt didn't want to fight them. He needed a distraction. Gwen Havar. There it is! Get it! Havar. 
No, that's not what you've been smelling, is it, lads? There's something else. You killed me, dog! Me, dog! The big man was deceptively fast, and it was all Driz could do to avoid his wild swings. Filthy drow! He'll not escape old Roddy McGissel. Drizzt had no desire to hurt this hunter, but he feared if he didn't do something, he'd soon be in real trouble. Yeah! No, damn ye drow, damn ye. Late that night, Urgulu knew Kamfana's plan was a good one, but that knowledge didn't stop his stomach from rumbling. He had sent his gnolls to kidnap the farmer and his son, hoping that by devouring their life force, he would finally reach maturity. Then, at long last, Urgulu could leave this stinking realm for the Stygian rifts of Gehenna. The drow had ruined that, but not for long. Tifanis had done his job well in stealing the drow's sword. With the Dark Elf's weapon, all the pieces would fall into place. He was painfully hungry, but Ogul suppressed those urges. After all, Drow did not eat those they murdered. The panther was toying with us leading us up and down those hills for hours. That drow is still out there, for now, but the ranger from Sundabar will be here soon. He'll catch that beast, no doubt. Be glad, boy. Had we stayed behind, well, you saw what happened to McGizzle's face. We thistle downs are farmers, Connor, not fighters. There's no shame in what happened today. Mother! Stay here! <gasps> Monster! Dead, Connor. Drizzt came down from the mountains tentatively the next day. Still, he could wait. His encounter with a hunting party had left him wary, but the Dark Elf's mind was made up. Despite the human's prejudices, and the large man with the snarling dogs. He would make this place his home. Drizzt had intended to begin by making peace with the farmer and his children, but when he arrived, they were not yet up and about. Morning turned to afternoon. An afternoon to evening. 
but not a soul stirred in the house. Something was wrong. No. The initial horror of Driss' gruesome discovery, the previous night, had not diminished, and the drow feared he'd never would. He had pledged to protect the farming family. And he had failed, but he would avenge their deaths. The thought was not so pleasing to Drizzt. He'd hoped that in leaving the Underdark behind, he'd escape the savage part of himself as well. Yet, with the images of the carnage at the farmhouse, still so horribly clear in his mind, and with no one else to turn to, Drizzt could look only to his scimitar for justice. Guinevar had picked up the attacker's trail easily, leading Drizzt high into the mountains. Then a familiar sound. It was the fast thing, the creature that had stung his wrist and stolen his scimitar days before. Who are you? Tiffanis, quickling. Did you kill the farmers? No. Then who did? Ulgulu. Waiting. Dinner. There. Ha! I... You... Come, Guinevar. Stop! None may! We have a visitor, brother, and he knows my name. How adorable. The sight of the two great big guests would have frozen a normal man with fright. But Drizzt was far from normal, and with a snarl he embraced the savage part of himself knowing he would need that dark strength to survive. As for Kemfana and Gulguru, the drow's arrival was unexpected, but not unwelcome. He had served his purpose in their schemes, and so only one question remained. Which one of them would have the pleasure of feasting upon this foolish dark elf? My... Murderer!
fool. I shall kill you, Drow Warrior. I shall consume your life force so that I may gain in strength. I shall... Ah. Be gone, Guinevar. Dave Falconhand was a renowned adventurer and skilled ranger, who had fought her share of monsters and seen more than her share of death. Yet looking at the remains of the Thistle Downs made her stomach buck and churn. When news of the drow reached Dave in Cinderbar, she had assembled a hunting party immediately. Gabriel, the human warrior. Kalendil, the elven archer, and Fret, the dwarven sage. The four of them had traveled many roads together, and a dark elf promised to be a rare and worthy foe. But what Dave discovered left her uneasy. Something shattered this lock. No drow strong enough to do that. Dark Elf's got a pet, big black panther, damned big cat, and you are Roddy McGissel. He's the one I told you about, Lady Falcon Hand, the one who fought the drow. And I can tell you that the same Dark Elf that killed one of me dogs and made me ugly did this. I seen his weapons up close. Now, if you've had enough of this place, we should get on the trail. That drow's got a lead big enough already. We? A Gizzle will accompany you. He's a seasoned hunter and he knows this area better than any. Hmm. And of course you'll be well compensated. The people of Maldivar are willing to pay a bounty for the drow. Two thousand pieces of gold. That's a very generous offer, Mayor Delmo, but unnecessary. Dove. I found this under a bed upstairs. A scimitar. Roddy said the Dark Elf wielded one. Please tell me we're not traveling with that oaf of a trapper. Don't think we have a choice, Fred. Glendil, what do you make of these tracks? Two identical sets made a day apart, and the first is deeper than the second, too deep for an elf's light steps. I noticed something odd as well. The ceiling beam in on the house. The one that broke the farmer's neck was snapped nearly in half. No elf or panther could do that. Only a giant possesses such a strength. Perhaps the drow had other help, some sort of infernal minion. Then why did we see no sign of such a monster? It doesn't add up. What do you think, Dove? I don't know, but we shall learn. The battle with the Berghests 
had taken its toll on Drizzt. His ribs ached and his right ankle felt like it was on fire, but he knew he had little time. The human female and her companions believed he had killed the Thistledowns, and they would come for him. The thought horrified and sickened Drizzt. He briefly considered revealing himself, explaining what had really happened, and how he'd avenged the farmers, but he knew it wouldn't work. The adventurers would see Drizzt's ebon skin and attack without thinking. Or even if they stayed their hands, McGissel and his dog would strike, forcing Drizzt to fight. And fighting would only prove to them that he was guilty. Drizzt had hoped that the people of Maldabar would be able to look past his race and accept him for who he was. But now that was impossible. Maybe it had been all along. Maldibar would never be his home. What is this? A shape changer, a bar guest, if I'm not mistaken. They are foul creatures from another plane who send their whelps to another world to feed and grow to maturity. The wound on its back looked like they were made by claws. Panther claws, three more up above, two goblins and a red giant, all killed by a scimitar. Like the one Gabriel found at the farmhouse. How? When the Thistledown's oldest boy first told of the drow, he said the thing carried twin scimitars. Then when I see him, he had just the one. The one he used to take my ear. But why would the Dark Elf kill the Berghest? I have it. Don't you see? Somehow the Berghest acquired one of the scimitars, then in the shape of the drow murdered the farmers. It all makes sense. The cracked ceiling beam, the two sets of tracks, one heavier than the other. No! Dark Elf killed the Thistledown clan. But, you're calling me a liar, dwarf, a boot print. He went this way. Well then, what are you standing around here for? Let's go. The discovery of the Burgess did little to allay Dove's concerns. Had the drow been working with the giants, a communion that had soured? Or had the Dark Elf sought out the Berghests to avenge the slaughter of the farm? Dove suspected the latter, but why did the Berghests attack on the Thistledowns put the farmers of Maldabar on alert, thereby ruining a draw raid? And if so, why hadn't he gone back underground? Dove had many questions, but few answers. Soon though, she hoped, that would change. Over the next few days, Driz did nothing but run, moving further and further away from Maldivar. He tried everything to hide his trail, crossing streams, doubling back on his own tracks and even taking to the trees. It did little good. The group stalking him was experienced with skilled trackers. They wouldn't be fooled easily. For their part, Dove's band moved in a state of exhaustion and frustration, compounded by the fact they weren't exactly sure what they were hunting. They'd all heard of Dark Elves, of course, but none aside from Magissel had actually seen one. Indeed, the last time Drow had been reported on the surface was more than ten years ago, when a group of them had massacred an elven settlement. And while Roddy spun tales of what the Drow was capable of, 
Dove had known enough liars in her life to suspect his stories were exaggerations at best. But still, they continued on. What choice did they have? Oh brother, never, never will I get this dirt out. You're clean enough, cleanest dwarf I ever seen. You never worked a day on mine, eh? Too weak? Hardly. And for the record, you're the filthiest human I've ever seen, which is saying something. Ha ha, little one's got spirit. Shh, we're being watched. The trees. was a panther, a black panther, easy my friend, so now we know their intentions, we shall see, how far will you hunt me? She had to admit, the draw was good. A celebrated ranger and adventurer, Dove Falconhand, had stalked every type of monster imaginable. Yet few had given her and her companions as much trouble as this dark elf and his pet panther. He moved fast no matter the terrain, changed direction often, and what he lacked in woodcraft he made up for in agility and intelligence. Still he wasn't perfect and every so often they'd find a footprint or a sign that marked his path, just enough to keep the hunt alive. Dove had her doubts about this expedition. She still wasn't convinced that Jarrow had massacred the Thistledown family in Maldibor. And she didn't trust Roddy McGissel. Dove had seen his type. Mercenaries more interested in money than truth too many times before. But she had no doubt they would catch the Dark Elf. He was a creature of the Underdark, unused to the dangers of the surface, and eventually he'd make a mistake. It was just a matter of time. Drizzt knew he was playing a dangerous game here, that he should run, put more distance between himself and his pursuers, yet he couldn't. Drizzt had done nothing to deserve this dogged pursuit. He had even killed a demonic burgess who had murdered the farming family, avenging them. He wanted to tell these hunters that, to walk into camp and explain everything, but his fear held him back. His previous encounters with surface dwellers had not gone well. At last, we meet my dark cousin. Another elf? For a moment Drizzt was happy at being discovered, 
and he knew what would happen next. He talked of his trials, his sins, his hatred of his own dark race, and the elf would accept him, forgive him. Then at long last, Drizzt O'Dordan would find peace. My name is... He was wrong. I don't care what you call yourself. You're a drow. That's all I need to know. Come then, vile creature. Come and let's see. Let's learn who is the stronger. I have no desire to battle with you. Die! Ah, no! Damn you and your spells, Dark Elf. But Drizzt had vanished, along with his conjured globe of darkness, leaving Kalandal alone with his growing doubts. He could have killed me. Why didn't he? The draw can't have gone far and he lost his advantage in the daylight. Ooh, we'll all fall dead of weariness before we find this infernal dark elf. If you can't keep up, Fred, then fall and die. We're not to be letting the stinking drow get away from us this time. Speaking of foul odors... Ah. Take cover! What is it, Gabriel? An avalanche? Worse. Stone Giants. The giants had his pursuers pinned down, and given time would kill them. At first, Drift welcomed the monsters as well, timed distractions, one that would allow him to escape once and for all. But he quickly realized the truth of the situation. Drift couldn't let that happen. Even if they wanted to hurt him, these people didn't deserve to die. Come, Guinevar. We are needed. Take out their legs! What do we do about the throwers? I... I don't know. Save your arrows, Elf. This one's mine. Gabriel, can you hear me? Dove, look! Not now, Fred. But it's the drow. He's helping us. Drizzt had done what he could. The hunting party would survive. But he knew better than to stay and wait for their thanks. Which would most likely come at the tip of a sword. Giants are dead and the drow's gone, but we'll close on him fast if we hurry. We shall pursue the Dark Elf no longer. He was never our enemy. What? Gabriel's in need of rest, and Kalendal's arrows are nearly exhausted, as are our supplies. I'll not so easily forget the Thistle Downs. 
the thistle downs have already been avenged, and you know it, Megizzo. The Dark Elf didn't kill them, but he most definitely slew their killers. The people of Maldabar will not be so anxious to see the drow brought in when they learn the truth of the massacre, and not so willing to pay, I'd guess. Cowards! Cowards! You're all nothing but cowards! Drizzt ran, moving higher and higher into the mountains. He traveled day and night, not daring to stop. And it was only when worn and exhausted, he finally looked back and Drizzt realized no one was following him. The hunters had given up. Drizzt wasn't safe, and he knew so. For far more insidious enemy had emerged sapping his strength and clouding his mind. Cold. Drizzt had no concept of seasons. In the winding tunnels of the Underdark, it was always warm, always dry, and so as winter fast approached, he was left confused and desperate for food and shelter. Which brought him to the mountain pass. The river was full of fish. And its rocks would offer protection against the increasingly bitter winds. Here Drizzt would wait out the cold. After all, he thought, it wouldn't last long. Damn, you've seen others make fire. You can do this. Come on, please. <laughs> yes! Kalendo breathed a sigh of relief at the sight of the flames. While Dove, Fred and Gabriel had returned to Sundabar, the elven archer had stayed, following Drizzt at a distance. He didn't know what to make of this strange drow who had shown him mercy and saved his friends, but he believed the Dark Elf deserved better than to freeze to death. Now Drizzt would live, and Kalendo would watch.